this blessed month. But then the question that we have to ask ourselves is what is it after this month of Ramadan? What can we take from this blessed month? What did we benefit from this blessed month that we can take on for the rest of the year? So as you know, it's a live phone-in, so you can phone in at any time. The telephone number is 0141280 If you have any questions on this topic, inshallah, you feel free to call us any time, inshallah. Today, I'm joined by a very special guest, uh, Sheikh Amin Buxton. Uh, Sheikh Amin Buxton is an educator and translator based in Edinburgh. He embraced Islam in 1999 and read Arabic at the SOAS University of, uh, University of London. He also studied Islamic sciences in a traditional setting in both in Syria and also in Yemen too. He's involved in several education initiatives, including iSyllabus and New to Islam in Edinburgh. He is also the chaplain at the Edinburgh Napier's University too. And I'd like to welcome Sheikh Amin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How you been? Alhamdulillah. How's yourself, Sheikh? Yeah, I'm very well. Good, 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 good. Um, and as always, inshallah, we invite our, our, our guest um, to inshallah open up the topic just with a few words, talking um, some general advice on the topic of what after Ramadan. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, so, Shoka, thanks for hosting us. And uh, yeah, our, our thoughts. Are, uh, there's, there's always kind of mixed feelings at this time. Feelings of 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 uh, in the sadness in seeing Ramadan go. Ramadan's had. It's always an honoured guest. We always we love. We get used to it. We get accustomed to it. We start. It takes a bit of time to get into it sometimes. And then we then we just we feel uh, we have such a, a beautiful relationship with it. And then all and before you know it, it's already on its way out. Um, and there's that feeling of sadness, accompanied with the with the feeling of joy of, of the coming of Eid, and the blessings that Allah has given us, and the hope for, for the, you know for forgiveness and the hope for Allah's bounty and all the all the good things that we, we know, and we we we, 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 we you know we, we, we believe will be given to us. The one who fasts Ramadan out of faith and seeking Allah's reward, their sins will be forgiven. The one who prays in the night in Ramadan, their sins will be forgiven. So we hope we have great hope in that forgiveness. We have great hope in. Um, all these gifts and the multiplication, the rewards being multiplied, and all the good things that are given to those who fast and those who seek Allah in Ramadan, and the sadness, of course, of that, of that time coming to an end, and then the kind of the the kind of the morning after feeling of, of you know what's going to happen after this, so, uh, yeah. especially in our current situation with with, with the lockdown and um, what kind of we go back to some kind of normality, having Ramadan having been a normality, and then going back to uh, to to the normality of not having Ramadan, but still. Not normality because it's for many of us. It's still things are still very, um, you know, un unusual in a sense. Although we have got used to this to this yeah. situation, but um, so it's kind of thinking about how what are we taking from Ramadan? Um, what's our state coming out of Ramadan? And what's 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 gonna? How do we how do we, how do we what's what, going forward? What what you know? What do we what, what do we do? And what what, what uh, you know what, what what are the next steps on on our path to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? Inshallah, that's something inshallah, we will be discussing in more details. Um, but just, just to start with, I mean, we are still in Ramadan, alhamdulillah. We still have yeah. a, a couple of days to go till the end of the month. So what would you say to how to best utilise these last few days and how to, as you said, depart with this wonderful guest that we have for a month at home? What's the best way to say goodbye or farewell to, to, to such, such, a, such a guest? Definitely, but it's, it's, it's far from over. We got tonight is is a blessed night. It's uh, it's Thursday night, so it's the night of Jummah. There's, there's always mm. every week, in, you know, every week this comes around inside and outside Ramadan. So there's a special blessing that comes on that night. For some, it'll be the 29th night, depending yeah. on what day you started. So that's an odd night, and it's a blessed night. Uh, there's you know, it's hope the Laylatul Qadr will co coincide with that. For those who started the day after, tomorrow night will be the 29th night. So so there's two. There's at least one odd night left. Um, in which we we hope to, to receive a little further. But regardless of that, we should we just we have you know we should just put put whatever and whatever time we have and energy we have into um, into doing extra worship at, at night, especially trying to finish trying to you know finish our recitation of the Quran, do more dhikr. Uh, tonight is, a, is a, as I said Thursday night. It's a night to do more salawat on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to try and get closer to him. Uh, tomorrow is the last Friday of of of, 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 uh, of Ramadan. It's a Juma. Of course, we don't have. So that's the Jummah, but we have the blessings of Jummah yeah. are still, uh, still there. 
um, uh, you know, and it's, it's 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 a blessed time, and just and just you know, just just conscious, and again, it's a metaphor for our lives. That the time time is so precious. Time just as soon as Ramadan came, it's almost gone. You know, it's almost gone. Mm. Um, likewise, our lives. How we don't know, we don't even know if we're going to live to the end of Ramadan, let alone live beyond Ramadan, let alone live, you know, to uh, to the end of the year or whatever. So it's um, it's a reminder to our, to ourselves to try and just seek that, and, and, and you know, to try and seek the best. Uh, use it, use our time to the best. Mm. And in the, the 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 night before, or the last night, or the night before Eid, that's a mm-hmm. very special night too. I mean, obviously we have Laylatul Qadr through mm-hmm. through the actual month of Ramadan, but the night before Eid is quite a, a, a auspicious month as well, uh, auspicious night as well. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's there's a night, there's the last night of Ramadan, which is mentioned as, as well, which is the night when um, the the prizes are given out, if you like, or the, the, you know, the Allah forgives a huge amount. Of, Allah forgives. It's right in the hadith that Allah forgives on that last on that last night as many people as He's forgiven all the previous nights in Ramadan. Um, but then there's another night which is the night of Eid, which is not no longer Ramadan. It's it's the first night of Shawwal. But it is, again, it's it's a, it's a night that people often forget because Eid, Eid is, if you think about Eid is starting on the day of Eid. Eid yeah. starts on the night before, as yeah. soon as the sun sets on on. Uh, say if Eid Sunday, then then it'll be Saturday night. Eid starts at, at sunset on Saturday night, and it's Absolutely. Ramadan's finished. But it's another it's another chapter, and, and you with that, that that's a lesson in in of itself that we how do we how do we um, start our new lives after Ramadan? The first thing we do is, is spend that night as best we can and get doing more extra worship. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the one who brings that light brings that night to life, Allah will bring their heart to life. Mm. So so you know, so we've been praying for our way. There's no more Tarawih, way, but there's extra worship we can do, the Quran, sure. the, so on until the dawn. Because we, we, we're used to now using those nights, so it's not it's not it's not a strange thing. Uh, a lot of other times of the year, if you said if someone said you need to spend to a couple of hours or an hour in worship, you'd be like, uh, you know, this is, and you struggle. But because you've got used to it now after Ramadan, it's not such a, it's not, such a, you know, you're, you're, it's not such a strange thing at all. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and and as you say, rightly so. I mean, it takes time at the start of Ramadan to get to get there, inshallah. But the, by the time it gets to the middle and the end, you know, you're fully, 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 um, you know, in full drive when it comes to Ramadan. I mean, what what what. One of the other things people tend to ask as well, for example, during Ramadan, because it's such a, a blessed month, you know, people mm-hmm. tend to be, uh, in terms of their iman, tends to be slightly higher, or mm-hmm. they're more motivated to do ibadah and worship. But how do we maintain, I mean, it's quite difficult, but how do we maintain that level of um, iman, that level of dedication when it comes to the aspects of worship and prayer and, and fasting and, and Quran and various other things? I mean, it's natural that we have ups and downs. So, I mean, like you know, you if you when you go to Hajj or Umrah and you're in Mecca and Medina, you, you know, you're on that you know, you're on that high of just constantly you know being in that environment and seeing people worshiping and seeing the Kaaba and visiting the Prophet and them. So, you know, obviously, you know, they're not going to be like that when you come when you come home. Likewise, in Ramadan, you are on a peak, you are on a high, especially as Ramadan comes towards a close, and you can't expect to remain in that situation, then you remain constantly in that state, and that's the nature of our, our we, we have ups and downs. But the main thing is to set like a to set a um, a realistic goal of things that we can stick to. The Prophet says, Allah Salaam, that the most beloved of actions are those which are consistent, even if it's a little. So we're not going to continue reciting the same amount of Quran. Perhaps we're not going to recite, uh, pray the same number of rakahs at night. We're not going to fast every day after Ramadan. But and all those things, you know, we forget these things have an effect on our iman. They have an effect on our faith. But we can set limits. We can set minimums. We can set goals that we can that will help us to kind of maintain some of that. Um, such as, for example, fasting. Um, uh, the Prophet says on Torah says fast six days in Shawwal, uh, and it's in good, it's important to intend that now. They say intend it now in Ramadan because your intention will be will be multiplied seventy times, even if you even if you don't end up end up fasting all the days. But so that's that's a, that's the first thing the Prophet says wanted us to. To maintain that link to fasting um, after Ramadan, to maintain our link to the Quran. Yeah. Uh, I mean, one of the scholars said, just pick up the Quran on the, on the day of Eid, just pick up the Quran. Yeah. Please just pick up the Quran because your heart and your 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 schedule has got used to doing it. Okay, so And when the soul gets used to something, it likes it and it, like, it doesn't like to be deprived of it. Yeah. So even if it's just for a minute or two, obviously Eid is a, is a day, you know, you're going to be doing other things and... But just pick up the Quran just for a few minutes to maintain that tie with the Book of Allah. Yeah. I mean, that that was my next question about yeah. holding on to the Quran because obviously, 
Ramadan being the month of Quran, the, the month of yeah. Quran was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, so obviously that attachment is always there when it comes to Ramadan. Um, but however, unfortunately, our mindset sometimes that we, we, you know, we only look at Quran at certain occasions, like for example in Ramadan or at a time of a khatam when someone passes away or something. But how do we increase that or keep that? Some, as you say, in some degree of momentum going when it comes to that relationship with the Quran. And of course, everyone's at different different levels. So um, one person's, you know, and it's beautiful hearing people's stories in Ramadan. About, uh, we have some gatherings with converts, and they, they for them, you know, they, they're accessing the Quran for the first time. Mm -hmm. Some of them, you know, some of them are reading it for the first time. Some of them just learning to read in Arabic. You know, for, for them, for them, we're just learning to read. Like, uh, you know, we forget how blessed we are those who can re read Arabic. And just for them, reading the short, learning to read the short surahs in Arabic is like a, it's like a, you know, like a huge, huge, uh, you know, gift. Um, so it depends on what what level we're at. If we struggle with recitation, then reciting a small amount of Arabic is, is good. Is, is you know is good. And be, uh, if you if we if we come for comfortable in reciting, then set a goal that that we can realistically do every day. Um, but at the same time. You know, reading the meanings. You know, it's very important to connect to the meaning. Reading a translation, and there's so there's been so many good online uh, material. You know, resources, especially in Ramadan, but you know that give you like summaries and you know just trying to understand and, and take insights into the, the, the stories which you read regularly. Trying to get in a general sense, uh, you know, the trying to get insights into the Quran and, and so having a, a balance of recitation, understanding, and then also learning. So you know, someone's done a tafsir of a. Of, of a yeah, scene, for example, you know, try and maintain that or sort of al-kaf or whatever it is. Um, we have it. We're constantly accessing the Quran and, and learning more. It doesn't just yeah. it doesn't just happen in Ramadan. It doesn't stop after Ramadan. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, as you're saying, it's an it's an opportunity for people now to to understand what they what they've read during the month of Ramadan. You know what they've what they've opened up in terms of the Quran itself. So I think it's quite important for people to do that. As and well. people also have people, people think people have have kind of their own quote unquote revelations, you know, they, they read a verse or they read something and that's just cl something clicks and they understand something and I'm done. So it's important to, you know, to, to, to kind of, pro you know, feed off that, you know, if you've understood something new, build on that, right, you know, make a note of that, write a journal on that, you know, and you kind of really interact with the Quran, that, that you know, if you've understood something new or something else, it's something you've, you might, you've read before, but now it takes on a new meaning, especially, you know, your situation changes and a verse which meant something uh, in the past now means something new to you now. It's, it's important to like, you know, to, to, to preserve those things and continue with those things. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, how, how would the, the companions of the Prophet be sort of reacted post Ramadan? Um, when it, I, just, I just kind of touched on it briefly about the, what we say, you know, the, we personally feel sad that we personally feel that way. I mean, how was it the time of the Prophet peace? How would the companions would have reacted with the end of Ramadan? I think they would have been, I mean, their emotions would be even higher than, than us because they would have, would have been in that amazing environment with the praying with the Prophet and Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and being in that environment and um, just an environment of Iman. But then, of course, you know, the, the, they were going from one uh, from one feast to the next because, you know, so they were still, the Prophet was still with them and, and you know, they would have, uh, Ramallah would end and then something else, you know, some other. And then you forget also they were constantly the prophet had many expeditions in ramadan it wasn't just a constant it wasn't just worship it was it was activity there was there was difficulties there was traveling there was it was it was there, there was a lot of um, variety in their in their lives in ramadan as well. yeah, for example yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. say again um and, and again as uh, as we've seen before sometimes you know obviously the quran is one thing but generally people do have this tendency where um, the, 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 the month of Ramadan gets them to reconnect with their religion or with their faith generally uh, not specifically just the Quran meaning that they want to kind of uh, um, take up the opportunity where they want to learn more about their deen um, mm. because the month has been inspirational or it's, as you're saying it's um, you know, push the right buttons for them this time and they want to kind of explore the religion what advice would you give to people from here on who might be in that position where they want to learn their deen now and more, learn more about it Definitely, and that's one of the beauties of Ramadan. It just it has that effect of just the vo literally the voices are calling us, come closer, come closer, and and, and we want to learn more. And um, so yeah, I mean, the, again, there's just so many. There's, we're lucky. There's a lot of resources we can use. Um, in, if you live in Glasgow, obviously, you have the I syllabus, which is running. Um, it's a, you know, it's a very uh, very beneficial course that runs. I say full year. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's no doubt it's a it's 
a commitment to make making it one 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 evening of the week yeah. when when it restarts obviously in in, in the autumn but, but you know the, you 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 know you'll see the benefits in your in your in your life in your religion in your in your practice and again of course there's lots of like online courses and online stuff what seekers guidance is a really is an excellent resource it's an online purely online uh, resource we can do lots of different courses some short some some more in depth those are questions are answered and it's, there's something for everyone there, and it's, it's less there's less commitment in the sense that you don't have to be physically in a place, but and, and lots of other stuff besides that. So, so there's online, there's there's, there's physical, there's you know there's a lot of lot of stuff to choose from. I mean, some of these people don't have access to the courses like that or access. I mean, would you recommend like books in Sira or Life of the Prophet? I mean, what would you recommend just to someone to pick up and say, look, I can yeah. they can read without having too much difficulty. Yeah, yeah, and no, it's good. It's good to have just as you have a, have a you know, if you try and have a, a, a part of the Quran that you read on a daily basis, likewise, have a have a book of Sira, like you said, to, to just to kind of go through that. Have have a have a reading plan that you're going to go through through uh, through. The you know, Sira of the Prophet is probably the first port of call after the Quran because that really gives you an understanding of of um, of everything, really. Of, of, of understanding of, the, of 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 life and of understanding of the Quran itself, and you know, so many lessons in that. Yeah, yeah. Again, just to remind the listeners, um, you are watching Pursuit of Knowledge uh, with Sheikh Amin Buxton today. Um, you can call us on 01412808779. And as we said, today's topic is what after Ramadan. Um, and if you are looking for any advice, then by all means do do, do get in touch. Um, Sheikh Amin, another question I wanted to ask you, and you kind of touched on it a little bit before as well, about obviously we're in the month of fasting. We've spent, well, we will have spent 29 or 30 days fasting. Um, now, fasting in itself is a worship that is recommended by the Prophet, peace be upon him, even out with Ramadan. Um, when and you know what recommendation would you give in regards to that? Um, so yes, yeah, it's, 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 uh, I mentioned before that the, the sunnah of, of, of fasting six days in Shawwal, and the Prophet saw some wanted us to maintain that connection and, and one of the wisdoms of, of sunnah and, and, and extra actions is that they. Kind of patch up any any deficiencies in the fard. So if you you might we, we fasted we, we fasted Ramadan, um, but made some of the something some, some there might be some deficiencies in our fast. Some that might we might have broken them by mistake, whatever. So just as with this, we have the sunnah of the prayer that makes up for the fard of the prayer. We have the sunnah of the fast to make up for um, for deficiencies in the fard. Uh, also, um, people may have days to make up. Most uh, women often have day you know will have days to make up from sure. from they missed. Um, during Ramadan, so that's a perfect time to, to, to do to make make those prayers up, make those fasts up. Sorry, but then beyond that, it's just making a making a habit. And, and the Prophet set awesome. a very realistic goal, which is to fast three days in every month. Mm-hmm. Okay, he said six days in Shawwal. That's if people do that, that's great. But then the, at least try and do three days in every month. Yeah. Um, and obviously, it's the, the winter is one thing, and the summer is summer is a lot harder. Uh, the winter we could fast. You could fast pretty much without, without you know, hardly noticing it. But in the, in the, in this, but if you can make that a goal to fast three days in every month, they can those fasts can be done yeah. um, all together in what is called the white days, the fourteenth and the fifth, uh, the thirteenth, fourteenth, and fifteenth of the month, the lunar month. Or they can be done spread out, like on a Monday and a Thursday. Um, another sunnah is to fast Monday and Thursday. Um, if you can fast both Monday, every Monday, and Thursday, that's amazing. But but if one or the other or or, choose, or just, you know, if you were to fast three days in every month, just choose one Monday, one Thursday, one Monday, whatever. Um, so, yeah, it's about, but I think three, three, three days in a month is a realistic goal that we can aim for, um, yeah. that everyone can do. And you can make it a family thing that, you know, if your kids, I found that if your, if your kids have been fasting Ramadan and they've enjoyed it, I, I my kids have, and they're, they're that age when they just, they, they want to fast. And so yeah. make it, make it a family practice, yeah. even once a month that you fast, everyone's going to fast on a one day and break the, have the iftar together. And it really brings a, a boost and an iman and it makes it very special because you know, love it and if, if the young ones even if they aren't fasting they'll feel something special even if you know even if they're not actually fasting because so. because that was going to ask that question i mean because after ramadan generally the you know when it comes to fasting it becomes quite an individual action rather than it, than, it, than as we do as a community and that tends to be a bit more difficult when you're on your own because as a community you, you know everyone's fasting and you can yeah. get into it very easily but or like, you know, we pray together, it's easier for everyone to pray together. But when it comes to fasting, obviously fasting on your own is a bit more difficult. Um, yeah. So what advice would you give to people in regards to that? I think it works both ways. I mean, it's, it's uh, with, with, with a lot of things, um, 
that when when you have to do something on your own, you have to be, have to be stronger and you have to have more. You have to be more sincere. That that's one of the things that you. That on, I'm on my own. I'm going to make a, attention to fast and it doesn't matter if anyone knows about it. But that's that's a beautiful thing. That's a relationship between you and Allah, and that's what fasting is all about. And at the end of the day, it's a, it's a secret between you and Allah. Sure. But it really helps to have have that community feeling. Have that just one or two people at least doing it with you. Um, so, so you know if you so so try and do things together. If you if, if it's a household you're in, if it's um, a, you know, if it's with your with friends or even online, you can you can say this. You know, let's let's make a make a kind of agreement. We're going to fast together, and you have that mutual encouragement. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's 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 useful. That helps as well. Um, yeah. Someone's asking. I've heard that um, in 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 paradise is a door called Babur Riyan for yes, the ones yeah. who are fasting. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? I was just reading that hadith with my daughter today. We just right, came across. Well. <laughs> the so, uh, yeah. Um, it's a Sahih hadith in Bukhari Muslim that the Prophet said that there is a there's a gate called Rayan. And Rayan has a meaning of um, first being uh, your thirst being quenched. Mm. Okay, Rayan is, a, is has that meaning. So in other words, you've you've, you've just suffered hunger, you suffered hunger and thirst in this life, uh, and, and and done it a lot. It's for, for people that not just Ramadan. Not, it's not just for people that fast Ramadan. Everyone's expected to fast Ramadan. It's mm. Those who do that ex go the extra mile and fast extra days. Yeah. Um, if, if they're people that, that love fasting. And, and, and do that extra, then they'll have this special reward of entering paradise from this gate. But the, the gate itself is symbolic that it's the meaning is, is has a meaning of the first, the first being quenched. In other words, you, you had this hard, hardship of of hunger and thirst in this life, and then when you enter paradise, that'll. And one one point I didn't mention is is that is is fasting the the, the blessed the specific days in the year that we should always fast and make a make a point to fast sunnah days to fast such as Ashura, the tenth of Muharram, mm-hmm. such as coming up soon we've got the Dhul Hijjah. Uh, very, very, very soon after after this Eid comes the next Eid and the, the yeah. days of Hajj. So it's important. It's good to fast in those days. Sure. Uh, specifically, the ninth of the Hajj is the day of Arafah. But any of those days in the in the in the, in the leading up to that as well. Sure. Um, sure. And we can make that a family thing as well. We can, uh, have the day of Arafah is something we do together. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, another question that I have here. It says, um, "I want to pray, but I find it hard after Ramadan to keep up my prayers." Um, so I guess in Ramadan they're kind of managing their prayers, but then post Ramadan, again it's that thing of you know keep maintaining that. Uh, what advice yeah. would you give to someone in that situation? It's difficult. It's difficult. Make, first of all, make your make a very firm resolve now and an intention now that I'm going to be someone that prays my five and um, that's my it's going to be my priority. And I make that priority. You know, sometimes we we we, we don't always prioritize. We we like doing extra acts of worship and do, but forget the the, the, the the your your capital your 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 basis for your worship with Allah is, is doing the minimum, which is a, which is the fund. So make a firm intention and a firm resolve to do that. Uh, help have have help from the people around you. So if you're if you're um, you know if you're living with people, then try and make it make a point. You pray at least one prayer together as as as, as a jamaah as, as a as a congregation, so that that at least sets some kind of routine. Uh, have have reminders uh, on your phone. Have um, have a buddy, you know, have a have a buddy who's you know who's going to kind of help you out, and remind you. You know, did you go out for fajr today? Uh, or, or you know, remember, before you sleep, remember to set your alarm for fajr. Call each other. Uh, you know, uh, try and just get someone else's help. Say say say. I really, you know, I'm sure you have a friend who can who's who's, who's firm on their on the prayer who who happy to help you. Just make it like a say. You know, reaching out. I can't. I'm struggling. Just you know, help me out on that, and yeah. the help will come. And then help out to, and reach out to the one who's help. Will come who's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, as, you know, as we say every day in the in the Fatiha, we worship you alone and we seek help from you. And that, you know, that's a reminder to us that even us, even people who are firm in their prayer, yeah. we can't do that without Allah's assistance. And it can, it can, that consistency can be taken away if we think, if we become complacent and think, you know, I'm, I'm you know, if we, can, if we attribute to ourselves and think, I'm great, I'm, I'm fine, I'm all right. Yeah, it is, nothing's take, nothing is, is, is taken for granted. Nothing's guaranteed. No, no, absolutely nothing is guaranteed. And as you said, it's like, you know what guarantee do we have? You know to see the end of this Ramadan, let alone think about thinking ahead as well. Um, as we said, you are uh, listening to um, Ramadan. T- you're on listening to Ramadan TV. You listen to Pursuit of Knowledge. Um, with me today is my guest Sheikh Amin Buxton. The topic today is what after Ramadan. Again, you can call us on 0141-280-8779 um, on this topic for any questions that you would like to ask. Um, another question just before we, the break I want to ask was, um, how important is it to self-evaluate after Ramadan or is it, should we do it whilst we're fasting? Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's good to have 
have a practice of self-evaluation self -evaluation anyway. I mean, it's good to do it in Ramadan. It's good to do it outside Ramadan, uh, whether it be um, a daily thing where you just take a few minutes out and just look at the, just analyze your day. How, you know, how did things go? How was, how was, how was I in terms of my, my prayer, my, if you're fasting, whether it be um, whatever acts actually done. And in a general sense, you know, at my behavior, did I get, did I do something? Did I do something I'm happy with today? Did I get angry with someone? Did I speak badly to someone? Just take take a kind of general account, and don't be too harsh on yourself. Be say be be happy for the things, the good things you've been you've, you've been able to do. Alhamdulillah, been able to fast. Alhamdulillah, been able to pray. You thank Allah and us, and, and in that gratitude, there's an increase. Allah says, if you thank me, then I'll surely increase you. Um. So, but but be aware of of, of your shortcomings. Try and try and um try and evaluate. Um, on a daily basis, try and evaluate on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a yearly or a monthly basis. You know, how has this Ramadan been? How does it comp has this Ramadan been? How does it compare to previous Ramadans in terms of uh, not just in terms of actions we can measure, you know, how much of yeah, sure. but in terms of your, st your, your state, how, how patient have I been? How much have I kind of felt Ramadan? How much have I has my heart kind of been softened by Ramadan? These kind of things to think about. Um, and then from that, you know, making a, a schedule of, of things to, to how to improve. So. And, and, and as you shared, I think it's an important point to stress on the point of where um, there has to be realistic goals because we have this thing where, you know, we talk about New Year resolutions and things like that. Um, and what it is, you know, for the first week, two weeks, we're there, but then week three, four, it kind of falls mm -hmm. on the wayside because our, our targets or our objectives are not realistic. Definitely, and we will. They said this, you know, they, they, like you say, yeah, things things they start off well, and then you just you just have to be realistic and and, and be as I said, the most beloved actions are the ones that are consistent. So just mm -hmm. doing the do. I mean, to be honest, doing the doing the the, ob, the obligation the fard well is better than doing loads the fard and extra mm -hmm. not very well. So if you just just do the fard and do whatever extra you can, but do it well and do it do it with a stick, be it, do it consciously and do it, uh, you know, with a good intention. Um, that's good, and then be very be firm. They say they say trying is lying. They say, say like you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna, try, I'm gonna try to go to the gym after Ramadan. And yeah, when you, when's that gonna happen? So if you say like I'm on Monday, and Wednesday, or one day Wednesday and Friday, I'm going to the gym from you know, and that's, I'm you know whatever it is you you've made an, you've made something yeah, firm, you made a firm resolve. You know. Zakal Khair. Um, we're going to go to a quick ad break. Um, you are watching Pursuit of Knowledge here on Ramadan TV Scotland. Uh, my guest is Shikhil Ming Buxton, and inshallah, as I said, we'll continue our topic, what after Ramadan, after the break. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Pursuit of Knowledge. Um, today our topic on Pursuit of Knowledge is talking about what after Ramadan. As we know, we are very close to the end of this blessed month that, we ha that Allah has gifted us with. Um, as Sheikh Amin, our guest today, spoke about it, it's just like having a guest at home who is about to depart from us. And we've been speaking about some of the things that we should be looking at for after Ramadan and how we can connect with the Quran, connect with prayers, um, and then also some of the fasts that we can do out with Ramadan that has been recommended by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As I said, my guest is Sheikh Amin Buxton. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Amin. Welcome Hello. back. Welcome back. Um, one of the other questions is to carry on, um, and again for our listeners, if you will have any questions, as you know, the number from you can see at the bottom of the screen, you can give us a call on that. Um, one of the other questions that we have here is regards to um, improving in character. Um, although I mean Ramadan is quite a physically demanding, you know, um, form of worship, but it does change you in some ways in terms of you know in terms of your anger, in terms of your patience. It helps to increase all those kind of things that you'd never thought of. But how do we kind of, again, maintain that side of things in terms of our character and behaviour, our patience and other things? That's true. Like, run fasting gives you that inner strength to try and overcome the, you know, the the, 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 the kind of calling to the ego, which yeah. which, which is just always, the ego is always trying to gratify itself and, and get what it wants. And uh, fasting is an antidote to that. Fasting, you know, encourages us to be, to be in control, to, to kind of not to respond to, the, to those callings, to, to those desires, and um, so so the idea is that Ramadan, you know, inculcates inculcates in us that inner strength, the way, way we can we can resist. If you can not, if you can resist not, you know, if you can resist food for eighteen hours, then uh, you should be able to re have have a there should be a resistance that's built up to kind of these lower kind of tendencies to get into arguments, to get into to to be. Um, to just to pursue things for your own, for the for your for your to gratify yourself, 
Um, and the real the, the measure of a Muslim is their, is their character. At the end of the day, it's not it's not it's not about the amount of worship you do. It's, I mean, this is important, obviously, but it's not you. You don't measure someone by the Prophet he when he explained he measured he didn't measure people by that. He, he measured by the, by their character. Hmm. He said that the heaviest thing placed on the scales is good character. He said that the closest closest people to me on the day of judgment were the those are the best character. Hmm. Um, so how do we maintain that? The first thing is just is an awareness. There's an awareness of self awareness. We talked already about kind of you know being. Uh, you know, taking ourselves to account and weighing up our, our time and how we spend things. So the self-awareness, that how you know, what are the, what what are the qualities that I have and what what can be improved, yeah. and what are my weaknesses, and 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 what and also when is what are the situations when I find myself falling into things that I don't like? Uh, what are the kind of people? If if it's company, then what are the people that kind of bring me that bring me down? If you sense in a sense, what are the things that I do? If it if, if it's the kind of things you watch on your phone, or what is it that kind of is, is 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 negatively affecting my character, and also what are the things that positive? What is what is the company that's positive, positively affecting my character? What are the things which I, which which I watch or which I which I engage with, which which raise my which raise me and improve my character? So it's kind of looking at those kind of things. Um, it's um, you know being being self aware, trying to trying to kind of overcome these these kind of negative things that you know that we have the we have whispering of shaitan is is whispers. You know, does it he does it? It's less in Ramadan, but after Ramadan, those things come back more um, to try and just kind of deflect us, to try and derail us, to try and stop us from, you know, traveling, taking the straight path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's kind of uh, being aware of those negative influences and things which kind of pull us down and trying to, you know, address those. Basically. Yeah, okay. And another question that we have, in, and again, it's, it's been asked a number of times in different platforms, different places as well. Um, as regards to obviously we're in lockdown situation, um, how are we going to how how do we celebrate Eid this year? Yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. I mean, how are we going to do it with our families, um, with friends? Um, you know, what do we do in terms of the Eid prayer? Do we still do the sunnas of is the you know the sunnas of Eid as in having a bath, wearing new clothes? Should we still celebrate it in some way or another? At the end of the day, with all these things, you know, they are. It's what you make of it. At the end of the day, so it's, you know, you can, you run down, can pass you by, and you, you, you can hardly, you know, hardly notice it. Or, or you can make, you can, you can put your all into it and get everything out of it. It's what you put. You get out what you put in. At the end of the day, so if you, so when it comes to eat, the more, the more you do, to, to, to venerate, you know, to, to honor this day and this, this occasion, the more you get from it. And that's the principle in everything. Okay, the more you venerate the Quran. The more you, uh, the more you get from it, the more you venerate the mosque, the masjid, the more you venerate sacred times and places, people, everything. You know, if everything is, is all the same to you, then it's all the it's all the same. You know what I mean? But if you see it as something unique and something different and something special, you will and you react and you act accordingly. Then that's how much you'll get from it. So when it comes to Eid, um, Eid starts. I think I mentioned before it starts on on sunset the night before. Okay, so as soon as as soon as we know it's going to be Eid the next day, it may not may not may not may not know it's sunset. We may not yeah. find out a bit later yeah. on, but. As soon as we know that it's Eid, that then, then it's the next day, then Eid has started, and, and one of the first things we do is, is make the takbir, so that, that, that we say Allahu Akbar. This is the kind of this is the, every time and place has a or, 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 or blessed times and places have dhikr, have adhkar, have dhikr, which is specific to them. Um, and Ramadan, the, the main dhikr is the Quran, uh, along with everything else. But the main dhikr is the Quran. But when it comes to Eid, the main dhikr is the takbir. Allah, Allah mentions it specifically in the Quran that, that He wants you to finish the prescribed period. And then to 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 kabir Allah ala mahadakum that you make this takbir of Allah that you make this glorification this magnification of Allah for the blessing of guidance you've been guided you've been given the ability you've been guided to Islam and you've been guided the ability to fast Ramadan so to, so glorify Him and 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 when we say Allahu Akbar we you know obviously we say Allah but when we enter the salah we say Allah Akbar the, the adhan what's meant is 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 we really in our hearts feel Allah's greatness that He is greater than everything else He is more significant than everything else in our lives everything else is. Everything else should pale into significance, into insignificance when we say Allah Akbar. Yeah. Everything else is kind of small compared to the greatness of Allah. So that's the first thing. The takbir starts at sunset and it goes on until the Eid prayer. So in Muslim, Muslim countries, you'll hear the Eid recite, the takbir recited out loud on the, the microphones and the night, throughout the night. You know, it's a real, you, so you really feel this. And I, but in our, we have to kind of make, uh, do what we can and do that as in the house, make it, the house is full of dhikr. Not, not, not to disturb the neighbors too much, but... But um, you know, make make the uh, the takbir last. You know, inter we do it intervals throughout the night, and do it after fajr, and then do it up do it when we sit to pray the Eid prayer. Do some takbir before that, 
So, so we really, and our, you know, we really hear this thicker and we, we practice this thicker. And our, the family and the children join in with that. It's really important. Uh, so that's the first thing. Um, should we pray the e prayer? Um, as a, you know, should we pray the e prayer in the, in the current situation, the lockdown? There's been a lot of um, discussion on this, and it's probably I'm, I'm sure people are a little bit bewildered because it's just it's just like so much out there. Someone's yeah. once your know, uncle and mom saying this, and so on, so saying this. I actually did a video put out today on this, but I, I'm I'm actually I'm conscious. Am I just confusing people even more because they're just like. Yeah. Just, just go with whatever, whoever, whoever you trust and whoever you, 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 you know, you, you're connected to. Just go with what they're saying, because I'm just, uh, I'll, I'll tell you one thing, and, and and you've already heard something from someone else. And is it this? Is it that? Is it this, this amount of tech beers? Do you do this? Yeah, I, I feel so. I apologize. I apologize if you if you're confused about it. Uh, yeah, I sincerely apologize. But at the end of the day, it's what you make of it. Um, if you do, at the end of the day, just pray some pray something as a family together. Uh, the scholars are in lots of different opinions of what that prayer is, but if you, uh, the es essence is, is is one essentially. Come together as a family, pray something, and thank. I make remembrance of Allah and thank Him. Okay, the detail we can go into the details all day long, but the, um, the main things we come together. If you're living on your own, um, and a lot of converts are, and, and a lot yeah. of people, are, you know, they've probably had a quite a lonely Ramadan. But at the same time. Um, all this online stuff has really helped people. We really felt that in this Ramadan. If you live on your own, then you can't. Then, then the scholars say you can pray Eid on. Some scholars say you can pray Eid on your own. Again, okay, it's, it's just it's a prayer you can do. You can do. And uh, this is enough. There's opinions out there that, 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 that allow you to do that. So, so, so don't deprive yourself of the blessing of praying Eid, mm. of having, of marking this day with with that prayer. Yeah. Uh, and preparing for that before that with, as you said, with the ghusl, having a shower. Uh, you know, and, and, and that's just, you know, just the, the, the physical is connected to the spiritual. Okay, when you have a bath, you, you, know, you start to come out smelling nice. It has an effect on the soul. It's not just a, it's not just a, it's not just a wash. It's, it's a spirit it has a spiritual effect. It washes away. Um, it, it cleanses your thoughts and mind just as it cleanses your body. Wear your best perfume. Okay, wear, have some special clothes that you wear for Eid, as you would if you're going to the mosque. Make it something special. You know, get your get the children to dress up. Yeah. Uh, have bukhur burning, you know, have, the, have, have a beautiful smell in the house, uh, you know, make the, house, make the room that you're going to pray in, make it tidy and make it beautiful. Um, do everything just to make it, make it that extra special, uh, make it special. Um, have, you know, obviously have, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu would have a few dates prior to the Eid prayer. Yeah. Okay, well, and to, to delay, delay having a meal to after the prayer, but have, have a, some dates, something sweet before the prayer, and then have a nice, you know, enjoy the pleasure of having a nice meal afterwards later on in the day. Um, but, but the more, the general thing is the more you make of it, the more you put into it, the more you get out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and obviously, I mean, government advice at the moment is lockdown, so that means of if course. you're going to connect with family, I mean, you can get do it through Skype, through Zoom, through Facebook, through of course, lots of, of different media. Yeah, it's that's it's really a shame. We, we, we really... Eid is such a family occasion. We love yeah, to be visiting each other and getting together, and everyone coming, people coming, you know, streams of visitors one after yeah. the other, and you know people coming yeah. together. And but it's just this is the time and the, the situation doesn't allow for that. Yeah. So to Zoom, Skype, I mean, you know, maybe dropping dropping something off at the family and giving greetings from a distance, yeah. Yeah. but not 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 uh, letting the guard down too much because yeah. it's just we don't want. Um, so we don't want sadness to come out of joy, you know. No. You don't want sadness to come out out of out of the, the pleasure and the joy of meeting up because it's just it's just too many people have already suffered from this and, and continue to suffer. So it's not it's not a, it's not a not to be taken lightly. No, not at all, not at all, not at all. Um, the the other thing I was going to ask about Shikami was um, regards to um, you know again in Ramadan people tend to. Um, pay their zakat and uh, give charity more often in the month of Ramadan. And we know this is something that the Prophet, peace for himself, did, became generous. He was generous in himself, but when during Ramadan he become, became more generous. Um, again, how do we keep that generosity even after Ramadan? Um, because regardless, I mean, poverty isn't just something that's limited to this particular month in any way. I mean, it's something that's ongoing. So how do we encourage people to continue giving? Yeah, it's a good it's a good point, and and um, people have a tendency just to, to you know to give to give their zakah in Ramadan. They give this everything is done in Ramadan, and yeah, yeah. there's a reward in that, obviously. But there's a great reward in that. But it's um, but yeah, you say it's, it's, it's like it's like everything. Having a, just as we continue the Quran, we continue giving, um, even if it's something very small. They say that you know that some of the pious would have a habit of just giving us something very small in charity in the morning, because it's narrated that that 
the, 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 the tribulation cannot get past charity. So if you give your charity in the morning, um, uh, you know, even a few 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 pennies, then then that's a means of protection. But on a, in a practical sense, maybe having a setting up a you know like a direct debit, setting up some kind of donation that you can do uh, when when it obviously when we come back to, to the, when the mosque reopened and have you know you, you give on Juma and so on. But having some regular giving that goes on and, and charity is not always and also charity is not limited to, to, to financial giving. It's, yeah. it's, we give our time, we give our energy, we give our care. We, you know, there's other other means of giving as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, just a reminder, listeners, I know we're coming to almost the end of the programme, but you're watching Pursuit of Knowledge. My guest with me is Sheikh, Sheikh Amin Buxton, and the topic is what's after Ramadan. So if any last minute questions, feel, give, feel free to give us a call. Um, I said the number's at the bottom of the screen. Um, Sheikh Amin, um, going back to something we spoke about earlier on, somebody was asking about... Um, is is about the Quran now. People want to get an understanding of the Quran, as in in their language and interpretation of it. So, what would you recommend to people? Where should they start when it comes to? I mean, obviously, there's benefits in reading Arabic and rewards and ajr in reading Arabic. But somebody wants to take it to the point of where they want to read translation or explanations. What advice would you give to them? I'd say I'd say always have always have a translation. Um, with you, you know, if you do have do read some Arabic and, and then read the translation, or have, or have just be going through just as you go through a khatam of Quran, go through the, read it through in English and and, mm. and uh, find a translation which which you uh, there's so many out there and there's ones there's ones you know always there's always new ones coming out, but find one that's that, that you, you the language you you, you pre, the language is is uh, you understand and you appreciate and um, there's a balance between some 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 translations are very use very simple language and some use very or kind of ornate languages. You know, it depends what what you know, what it does it what does it for you, and you can compare and you can compare different translations. But have have a have a, a regular practice of reading and translation of the Quran and understanding what's what's saying. That's the message. That's the guidance uh, that that we, that we act upon. What we it's not just something just we read like a ritual and then carry on with things as normal. We read, we understand what's being said to us. It's the message of, from 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 Allah to us to, to act upon. Absolutely, absolutely, um, and. We, we we spoke about again something earlier on about um, the 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 prayers and, and you talk about salah after Ramadan. Is there any particular you know during the month of Ramadan we're equipped with du'as that we can recite um, during blessed month the first ten days, the second ten days, and for the third ten days? Is there anything that we should recite immediately after Ramadan is over? Any du'as we should ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala after our prayers now that Ramadan is no longer with us? I mean, the first, the first dhikr after Ramadan is the takbir, of course, we mentioned that already. Yeah, but, um, but yeah, asking, asking for acceptance, pleading with Allah for acceptance, you know, so from, from, they say that the, that the pious, they would spend half the year longing for Ramadan to, to come, asking for Ramadan, and then the other half the year, they, they say, bidding farewell to Ramadan, asking for acceptance, asking, you know, hoping. Uh, so, so, so yeah, keep asking, you know, keep asking for that acceptance. I mean, if you, if you know du'as from the Quran, such as, Rabbana taqabal minna, that's great but if you don't then just yeah. in your you know dua is this, the essence of dua is the state of not the words that you say you can you could someone can recite a beautiful dua it sounds great in arabic and it all rhymes and it, but if the heart isn't there then it's not it's not really a dua if you whatever language you are whatever words you have if it's whatever word, if it's in your heart then just express it to allah and that's that's the essence of dua i mean Jazakallah khair. Um, Sheikh Amin, we're going to have to leave it there. Jazakallah khair for your time, inshallah. And, and with the remaining days, please remember us in your du'as, inshallah, of this blessed month, inshallah. You can be accept it from yourself and ourselves as well this month, inshallah. Jazakallah khair once again to Sheikh Amin Buxton. Um, you were watching Pursuit of Knowledge, um, and inshallah, this is our last show of this Ramadan. Inshallah, as you know, however, um, here on Ramadan TV Scotland, we will be continuing broadcasting right through into the lockdown post Ramadan as well inshallah so we will be bringing some excellent shows even after Ramadan inshallah so make sure you stay with us um, and inshallah as I said that um, you can get in touch with us for any feedback and suggestions as I always say we'd love to hear any feedback and suggestions in regards to our shows um, because we would only want to improve and, and do better in regards to improving um, and um, bringing more to yourselves in terms of um, the types of shows that you might want to watch. So um, again, Jazakal Khair for watching. Um, it's been a pleasure. Inshallah, hopefully you've benefited from the shows that we've had previously here on Pursuit of Knowledge. And also I'd like to give a big thanks to the background team as well, who have done some fantastic work for everybody here um, on Ramadan TV. Jazakal Khair once again for watching. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.